Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at an application of the second isomorphism theorem. So let's recall what it says. So if we have a group G, so I haven't written that G is a group, but that follows from context. So we've got a group G, a subgroup H, and a normal subgroup N, then we have the three following results. So the first two are kind of preliminary. So N is a normal subgroup of H intersect N, HN is a subgroup of G, and then finally, this is the most important one, which says HN mod N is isomorphic to H mod H intersect N. So I have another video where we prove the second isomorphism theorem. Here we're just looking at an application. And now I should say here that if G is an additive group, which it will be in our example, HN is really H plus N. Okay, so the example or application if you will, that I want to look at is if the large group G is the integers where addition is the operation. And then we know that all subgroups of integers have a certain form, and that form is the following. So H is equal to M times Z. In other words, all multiples of M and then we'll say n is equal to n times z. In other words, all multiples of n. Now, I want to get a handle on what this hn is, which is obviously h plus n because we're additive in this case, and this h intersect n. So notice h plus n in this case is going to be mz plus nz. Okay, but notice that's equal to m times x plus n times y, where x and y run over the integers. And then by some elementary number theory, we know everything of this form is a multiple of the GCD of M and N. So I'll let you look at your textbook for that. That's generally at the very beginning of an abstract algebra textbook or in any sort of um, elementary number theory textbook as well. And in fact, the smallest positive element from this set will be equal to the GCD exactly. And from all of those facts, this means that this as a set and as a subgroup is equal to the GCD of M and N times Z. In other words, we have all multiples of the GCD of M and N. So now I explained why this was a multiple of the GCD. So why do we get all multiples of the GCD? Well, first of all, notice that uh, the GCD is in here because it's the smallest element. But if the GCD is the smallest positive element of this, then two times the GCD will be in there just by taking twice whatever number it takes to get the GCD and then so on and so forth. And then I'm going to go ahead and write this as D times Z. And so in other words, what I've done is I've set D equal to the GCD of M and N. Okay, good. Now the next thing that I want to do is get a handle on H intersect N. So H intersect N is going to be given by M times Z intersect N times Z. Okay, so let's see what that means. So that's going to be all A in the integers such that A equals MX and A equals NY uh, for some X and Y which are integers. Okay. So, in other words, these are common multiples of M and N. Okay. Good, and then it follows from, again, some fairly routine uh, elementary number theory that what we'll get here is that everything in here is a multiple of the LCM. So notice that every common multiple is a multiple of the LCM, um, and in fact, the LCM will obviously be in here as well because we've got all multiples of M and N. So this is going to be the LCM of M and N times Z. Now I'm gonna call that L times Z, and then where L is equal to the LCM CM of M and N. So we've got something like that going on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board, bring up just the notation that I need and these like kind of intermediate results, and then we'll see what the second isomorphism theorem does for us.
Okay, so on the previous board, we argued the following. So again, we've got G equals the additive group of integers, H is M times Z, N is N times Z, D is the GCD of M and N, and L is the LCM of M and N. So we argued that H plus N, which is playing the role of HN, was equal to D times Z, where that's the GCD, and H intersect N um, is equal to L times Z. Now, let's go ahead and apply the second isomorphism theorem to get our nice result. So we have H plus N, we have H plus N mod N is isomorphic to H mod H intersect N, so let's put that in terms of our groups. So H plus N was DZ. So we have DZ mod NZ. So that's going to be isomorphic to H mod H intersect N. So now notice that H is MZ mod LZ. Okay, so that's what we've got going on right there. Okay, so now what I want to do is get a handle on exactly what these are on either side of this, this big isomorphism that I have. So I have DZ mod NZ and then MZ mod LZ. So now let's consider the map phi um, from DZ to uh, the following group. So let's say it's Z uh, N over D. So notice that n over d will be a natural number because n is a natural number and d is a natural number. So we're okay there. And then notice that everything in here is of the form d times x. So uh, we'll define this in the following way. Phi of dx is going to be equal to uh, the equivalence class of x. And so... Okay, good. So now it's pretty easy to check that this is a homomorphism and that it is also onto. So the next thing we want to find is its kernel. And notice that the kernel of phi in this case is going to be everything that's sent to zero. Um, so that's going to be all dx in dz such that phi of dx equals zero which is going to be all dx in dz such that, well, phi of dx is the equivalence class of x, which is equal to zero. But now notice that the, if the equivalence class of x is equal to zero, that tells me that x is a multiple of n over d, which tells me that dx is a multiple of n. So what we can gather from that is that this is all d over x uh, such that d over x is in nz. Okay, great. So in other words, the kernel here is equal to nz. Then by the first isomorphism, isomorphism theorem, that tells me that dz mod nz is isomorphic to z uh, n over d. Okay, great. So now I'm going to add that to the left-hand side of this. So this is Z uh, N N over D. Okay, great. And then similarly on the right-hand side, I can add this is Z um, L over M for the same reason. And I should say isomorphic to using uh, the same sort of argument. So now I'm gonna clean up this part of the board, and then from that, uh, we'll see that we get new proof of a standard result. Okay, so to reiterate where we, are, where we are, we took the second isomorphism theorem, wrote each side in terms of our subgroups, and then saw that those quotient groups were isomorphic to some cyclic groups which are fairly easy to work with. So we have Z mod N over D is isomorphic in the end to Z mod L over M. But now what that tells us is that the order of the group over here and the order of the group over there is the same. So in other words, uh, N over D, which happens to be the order of uh, Z N over D, 
So that has to be the same thing as the order of L over M, which is L over M. Okay, great. So we have N over D equals L over M. Now I'm going to replace D and L with what they are by their definition over here. And that's going to give us N over the GCD of M and N equals the LCM of M and N over M. Okay, great. But now multiplying both sides of the equation by M and rearranging things a little bit, we get this standard result that says that the LCM of M and N is equal to M times N over the GCD of M and N. Okay, so there's obviously a much more elementary way to do this that doesn't involve the second isomorphism theorem, but I think this is a nice result from the second isomorphism theorem. All right, this is the end of the video.